Medical treatments have started out their lives as many things. Chemotherapy agents, for instance, come from tree bark, periwinkle plants, and even sea sponges. That seems pretty wholesome, right? But what if I told you that tens of thousands of lives are saved every year by a drug whose origins are a bit... darker? Like would be a war crime today darker. Let's talk about mustard gas, chemical weapon turned life-saving cancer treatment, the research of which probably got me put on some NSA watch lists. Mustard gas is a type of chemical warfare unleashed intentionally during World War I and, possibly worse, by accident in World War II. Exposure to mustard gas causes skin blistering, lung damage, blindness, and even death. During the Second World War, the U.S. feared the use of chemical weapons against U.S. troops, and the War Department began secret experiments to study mustard gas in hopes of finding antidotes. Researchers at Yale, pharmacologists Alfred Gilman and Louis Goodman, began to study a relative of mustard gas, nitrogen mustard, and the damage it does to cells. Their own studies, as well as the studies of victims of the mustard gas attacks during World War I, showed that it markedly reduced white blood cell counts. They started to wonder if it could selectively poison malignant cells, specifically malignant lymphoid cells, like the ones that cause lymphomas, a type of cancer of the white blood cells. Let me stop here and let you know that mustard gas isn't related to this kind of mustard. In fact, it's not even a gas. The name comes from its yellowish brown appearance and apparently the smell. This may allay some fears or it might be disappointing to those of you that hoped you were about to find out that your ballpark hot dog habit is the fountain of youth. Either way, naming things this way is how rumors get started. So I don't know who needs to hear this, but please, please always visit your doctor for medical advice and not the condiment stand. You know who you are. So the researchers at Yale approached surgeon Gustav Linskog. Lin, Linskog. Gustav Linskog. 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 Gustav Linskog. Sorry for butchering your name. In the hopes of finding a patient who would be suitable for a trial treatment of nitrogen muscle. Uh. Remember, clinical trials were not what they are today. They had only tested this treatment on a single mouse up to this point, though it had pretty successfully treated the mouse's tumor for a while. They found a patient with lymphosarcoma. In today's terminology, it would probably be called non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Identified only as JD, his prognosis on his current regimen was described as a hopeless case. His tumors were so large, he was having trouble eating, breathing, sleeping, and even moving his upper body. He was at the hospital to die at this point. In August of 1942, JD received his first intravenous infusion of synthetic lymphocytal chemical. Remember, while there's every indication that the patient knew what he was agreeing to, the War Department preferred to keep the whole experiments with nitrogen mustard thing on the DL. His patient records were hidden away for over 60 years after this, tracked down in 2010 by persistent Yale physicians. The rest of his record is similarly censored, with his treatment being referred to as lymphocidin, or even more cloak and dagger, substance X. Well, despite the mystery and undeniable danger of this experiment, within days of receiving the secret poison, JD was able to move, to eat, to sleep. He was feeling better. A month and 10 injections later, JD's tumors had disappeared. Nitrogen mustards are a part of a group of chemotherapy now called alkylating agents. They work by binding the DNA to itself or causing breaks in the DNA. Both prevent the cell from reproducing. In a disease like lymphoma, tumors form when white blood cells divide uncontrollably. The alkylating agent eliminates both the bad white blood cells and the good white blood cells. But the hope is when new cells are made, the bad cells won't come back. Unfortunately for JD, just a couple of weeks later, the bad cells were coming back. Another treatment knocked them down again. Once again, they came back. After a third treatment, a third relapse, and insurmountable side effects, JD succumbed to his cancer in December of 1942, 95 days after being the first ever cancer patient treated with chemotherapy. I told you it was dark. 
But I also told you hundreds of thousands of lives have been saved. Treatments similar to nitrogen mustard but with fewer side effects were developed in the following years and are still in use today. In fact, alkylating agents are now used in almost every type of cancer chemotherapy. By the early 1960s, chemotherapy combining multiple drug treatments began to give longer, lasting remissions to patients similar to JD. An incredible story in and of itself that maybe I'll tell another day. Because of his 95 days in 1942, today the relative survival rate for cancers like JD's is nearly 73%. That's more than double what it was 60 years ago. It turns out the poison is the antidote. And JD's hopeless case pulled it out of the dark. Thank you for joining me today. To go down an internet rabbit hole on nitrogen mustard, alkylating agents, or anything else we talked about today, check out the links below.